It's a wonderful day, it's a wonderful day for a ride on the train. April 2011, and Wales's latest railway is almost complete. 25 miles of a narrow gauge track running through the stunning scenery of Snowdonia. It's got to be one of the great mountain railways of the world, and it certainly will be when it's finished. I like building railways, full stop. Well, I'm looking forward very, very much to it. It'll be one of the nicest runs in Europe, I'm sure. Supported by royalty and donations from around the world, the Welsh Highland Railway has taken 15 years to build and cost almost £30 million. Pounds. But it hasn't been an easy ride. Many have objected to what they see as the defiling of a quiet valley in the National Park. The railway's here and we can't do anything about it. We've just got to work around the railway. It won't succeed. The one before it didn't. It's just toys for rich men. But for the volunteers who do it for the love of steam, it's a dream come true. This is not an enthusiast railway. This is a railway. Built to carry slates from the mountainous quarries of Snowdonia to the port of Porthmadog, the trains running on the original Welsh Highland were too small to operate successfully on the steep gradients between Dinas, Weinvaur, Pridhi, Bedgelert, Namor, Pontcroesor and Porthmadog. The railway went into receivership in 1927 and closed in 1937. Some, though, like retired local farmer John Pritchard, still remember it in its heyday. Well, I remember it's been built when I was very, very young, in the first place from his uh, right through to Portmatoc. And I used to come up from the school at Belgellas for a weekend with my granny up the road there. On the, I think it was a three o'clock train and dropped down there after the little station and walked down to the farm, yeah. I remember very well uh, Miriam Roberts, she was about my age, she dressed up in Welsh costume and I think she sold a little souvenirs in, in the station in Belgellert. Mm. During the Second World War, the railway was stripped of sleepers and tracks as metal of any kind was a valuable commodity in the war effort. The track bed was never sold off but remained an entity, incorporated into fields, farms and footpaths. But the dream of resurrecting the railway held fast, and in 1996, after years of local controversy and thanks to the personal intervention of Transport Minister John Prescott, work finally began in Carnarvon. And welcome to the launch of the Welsh Highland Railway Project. Delighted to see you all. Launching the construction of the railway is something we've planned for for, for many, many years. The Welsh Highland Project... The two men closely associated with the planning and execution of the project have become known as the Two Mikes. Mike Hart runs a manufacturing business in Yorkshire. Mike Schumann is a successful businessman from Norfolk. I like building railways, full stop. And this is a railway which has been crying out to be rebuilt for years. But the Welsh Highland Railway could never have been rebuilt without its thousands of supporters and hundreds of volunteers. People like Tony Murphy from Carnarvon. Well, it's just the enjoyment coming out. Fresh air, it's, and it's totally different from work. Well, we've got a mixture of people here. The computer men, ex-bank managers, good gang of lads. So, what more do you want? I'm a gas engineer with British Gas. I haven't done any other job, to be honest with you. That's where I've been all my working life. So to get out and do something different is fantastic, really. It was Thomas the Tank weekend, wasn't it? And we'd gone with the boys and the, there was the caravan, Welsh Highland caravan with the big banner, WHRS. So he went and joined up and the, he said he was going on the weekend. So I said, why are you going with your horse? <laughs> and it stuck. They go on trips, and that, which he loves, yeah. It's nice and quiet. Get it, it to me, Adele. Get it, yeah. 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 
Other volunteers have spent years working here in Boston Lodge Works. This is the engineering heart of Hestinio Railway, where steam engines and railway carriages are built and maintained for both railways under the BDI of former speed cop Tony Williams. I had a lot of interest in uh, the proposal to open the railway from Port Maddock to Carnarvon or Carnarvon to Port Maddock and uh, the fact that they were looking to purchase steam locomotives in South Africa um, to operate on the railway and uh, when the opportunity came I and a few others went out to see what we had agreed to buy and had been renovated in South Africa and it was a very interesting uh, experience. <laughs> The new steam railway needed steam engines, and these were found in Port Chepston on South Africa's east coast. The Bay Garrett locomotives that work the Banana Express line were probably the only ones in the world still capable of working the steep and difficult terrain of North Wales. We had a person who worked here, Evan Davis, who was due to take charge of the locomotives when they arrived in this country. He was out there, um, gaining experience. Well, we're greasing up, we've got to grease every day, and th these parts, they move so much that um, they'll wear if you don't grease them. For the Welsh enthusiasts who made the trip to South Africa, seeing steam locomotives on a real working railway was a boy's own dream. Before I forget, they're all bearing there, you don't put Marfits in it. Evan Davis's tutor on the Alfred County Railway was Afrikaans train driver George Van Leerkerk. Only the mouse and bushes you That's do right. the Marfits, that you do with them comparing grief. Yeah. It's a, a great sense of uh, achievement that we planned so long ago to bring some of these engines back for the Welsh Highland Railway. It's exciting, and we are about to set off with these machines up a railway which has not had a passenger train to its far end for quite a number of years, and, you know, it's great. It's in my heart today, and um, it's a big day for us today, and um, by the time they've finished sorting the engines out, uh, and the tank cars for water, but we, they don't carry en enough water to go all the way, um, get all that sorted out, and get the train sorted out. There are a lot of, I'm not sure how many, but there's a lot of empty wagons going up, and then the carriages behind, so once we get all that shunted on, we'll be going up to the Banana Express station then to pick uh, all the travel from the Fishing York and the World Island Railway. And then once we go them on, we're away. I remember Evan in the cab of the locomotive, enjoying himself with a big smile on his face. That's uh, never disappeared and uh, unfortunately always had a cigarette that went with a smile. <laughs> the thing about them in Africa was they'd been provided with a little swing out seat, so the driver was quite comfortable sitting out, feet dangling over the scrub. We're just able to reach the brake with his one hand on the regulator with the other, it was uh, the cool breeze. <laughs> It's a huge undertaking to track down and transport two locomotives from the South African Veldt to the mountains of Wales at a cost of well over £200,000. And to everyone involved, it's an amazing moment in the rebirth of their dream. Welcome to Elfrid County Railway. Our own staff, John Wall, Evan Davis have been here and have mucked in and were working even till late yesterday to make sure that our engine could go on your train. Hugh and Mike have provided the money to pay for the locomotives to be rebuilt. <laughs> Mike, perhaps you'd like to receive a small oh, memento yeah. of loco <laughs> number 143. <laughs> and Hugh, oh, locomotive number 138. <laughs> <laughs> a small token of my appreciation for my tutor for, for putting up with me. Hell yeah. Is that? That's my engine in Fishing um, Railway. Oh. Lloyd George. Oh. The special charter in South Africa was a huge success. But sadly, for Evan Davis, it was to be his last involvement with the railway. 
Within months of returning home, he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Evan is missed very much so. When he passed away, the train passed the cemetery and the train slowed and made the salute with a whistle. A very moving experience. I never thought that I'd be sitting here today in, uh, with responsibility for the maintenance of all the rolling stock um, on both the Welsh Island and the Fistinog Railway, but there we are. Perhaps it's just as well we don't know what's going to happen. After nine long months at sea, the South African Bay of Garrets finally arrived in the UK, ready for restoration work to begin. It would be several more months before they reached the Welsh Highland Railway Depot at Dinas near Carnarvon. It's the gala weekend of the first thing of railway. It's an event that we hold every two years or so. It gives people a chance to see aspects of the railway that they wouldn't normally see. This year, the main attraction of these Garrett locomotives that have arrived from South Africa. We've got the red one, which is in the condition it was in in Africa, and the green one, for comparison, has been refurbished. With each and every step in the renovation dependent on securing new funds, the track began to take shape, winding down from Carnarvon through Dinas to the foot of Snowdon at Tridi, the highest point of the track at 650 feet above sea level. We've been coming up here from Llechli, 129 miles, and I don't get anything from them. Well, it's so much of a thrill that I've, I've been waiting for this to happen for about three years. But um, it's nice to, to see it get, getting there. Well, I live in Oregon. Uh, I've worked there for the last 20 years building the, the light rail system in there. And uh, now that I've retired, I have time to come back and work on this from time to time. The more volunteers we have, it's uh, another way of finding match funding because every hour of volunteer work has a value placed on it and that enables the Millennium Commission to release cash to us. So um, the volunteers are necessary and hopefully we can attract them as we do on Fastiniog by giving them uh, self-fulfillment, um, so to speak, in the jobs that they do. Well, my name's Helen Strees and I've come up with my husband who's a regular supporter of the railway and um, we come up every whenever we can really. It's very male orientated really. I have good fun though when she does come up. Trying to persuade her to come up more often is the problem. It's nice to get away from Swindon really. <laughs> well the Black Hand Gang came about when everybody was getting black finger marks everywhere. And then, of course, all oh, this bloody black hand gang have come and been here again, like, because there was finger marks everywhere on the walls. And it's uh, something that's stuck. It's the North Wales gang, the black hand gang. <laughs> then you've got the other gang is the rest of the world gang. They're a miserable lot. Our gang has to go and redo what the rest of the world gang has done every time because they just rush the job. They, they don't even stop for a pan ad. By 2003, the railway had reached the halfway mark. But with work still at a crucial stage, the railway inspectorate had not yet given permission for Fistinog to run passenger services to Rhydi. But they made one exception. Right, well, it's a very special day today. Uh, we have the Prince of Wales arriving in about an hour's time, and he's going to ride on the uh, section between Wynebar and Rhydi. This train we've got today is... Uh... It's a 1920s train, really. Uh, actually, it's quite appropriate because it would have been typical of the trains that started running back in 1922-23 when the Welsh Island was first opened right through. It's uh, named after the then Prince of Wales in 1864, and he was later King Edward VII. It's a great honour that the Prince of Wales has asked to visit the railway and see what we've been doing for so many years and it's doubly so that he's requested to ride in the train part of the journey and then join us on the engine for, from Snowdon Ranger up to Rydie and hopefully 
he'll want to drive the engine himself and I look forward to it. They're not difficult to drive really, I think perhaps just a little bit of uh, hype regarding it. It's just uh, experience. I'm quite sure he'll be more than capable of driving the engine. One or two of us were selected to stand at the front of the line and he came along and shook hands with me personally and other prominent members of the track gang as well. We had these badges made up specially and we're called the Black Hand Gang because we get a lot of grease on our fingers when we're assembling the track panels. You end up with very, very black fingers. Not today, I've cleaned my fingernails so it's all, all nice and clean now. The privileges of being the Prince of Wales. Prince Charles had let it be known that he would like to drive the loco on this historic day. So at Snowdon Ranger Halt, Mike Hart was on hand with a clean overall. Very enjoyable for me. He's an excellent driver. I was very impressed with the skills that level that he has. In fact, it might be worthwhile writing to St James's Palace and asking him if he'd like to volunteer now and again. Since 1990, when the project kicked off, this is the day when we achieve the halfway point in the reconstruction of the railway. Trains will reach Ridley. We can say to ourselves, we've done that. We've built 20 kilometres of railway, only another 20 to go. It's a wonderful day, it's a wonderful day for a ride on the train. Within a few days, and with the railway inspectorates now on site, passenger trains were allowed to run as far as Street D, generating much needed cash for the project. Today has been an excellent day so far, and we're only just halfway through. I think we're going to make piles and piles of money. I hope we are anyway. But not everyone was happy to see the railway reinstated. Many locals still oppose the railway on environmental grounds. Well, I think the most important thing is that it's taken a really quiet, secluded valley in Snowdonia with a national park where we're supposed to have quietness and quiet enjoyment of the countryside. And it's intruded with noise and bustle and things. And it's really been very difficult for us as a farm here. It's divided our farm into two and it's made it very difficult to gather sheep and to deal with the sheep as we normally do. Well, I mean, how many people would tourists on that? They were like... There was, it was all railway people again, yeah, wasn't it? it? Was well, they owned them a fortune in free tickets. <laughs> We've lost because of this good walking routes it's damaged wildlife it's lost amenities this is just going to be the seventh uh, tourist railway in the national park it won't succeed the one before it didn't it went bankrupt this money from the lottery the millennium fund has been given to something which is it's just toys for rich men despite all the opposition and legal wrangling Work continued, thanks in part to Welsh and European grants, gifts from supporters and the effort and enthusiasm of volunteers. By 2005, track laying had progressed beyond Rhydi and special excursions were organised to keep the work in the public eye. It was an opportunity for Paul Lewin, Festiniog Railway's newly appointed general manager, to show off his driving skills. On my days off, I can go and put my overalls on and drive this lovely steam engine that's on the front of this train, and that is just great. It's the wages for the job, it's the bonus. But of course, what driving means is that you get to meet people. You can see up here, this tells you that the brakes are off. I'm very, very proud of this railway and what all those volunteers have achieved in building the railway and building the engines. And it's great to have an opportunity to show it to people. For very important passengers like John Pritchard, now the Black Hand Gang's unofficial mascot, it's a chance to ride the line again. I'm 90 years of age, you know, so I'm still looking forward. I even drove it a little bit, under instruction, of course, from the experts.
Well, I'm looking forward very, very much to it. Very much. It'll be one of the nicest runs in Europe, I'm sure. John Pritchard's neighbours are not so enthusiastic about the project. Hill farmers John and Gareth Owen are facing the biggest upheaval of their lives. The bottom land will be divided into at least seven different parcels of land, which will create a lot of problems for us. Negotiations have proved, up to now, sort of difficult uh, as regards various aspects of ownership and sort of rights away and one thing and another. I hope that at the end of the day we come to a satisfactory conclusion. The close-knit gang of volunteers under the leadership of David Thomas are embarking on another weekend of laying track. The camaraderie has grown because the gang have been together, the core of it, as if you like, for the last 15 years. And people have come and gone, but that core of people has been there and we've made friends with each other, friends for life, and it's a form of relaxation. And people sometimes say to us, well, why do you do that? Why do you work for nothing for the railway? And I say to them, well, why do you organise a football team? This is what we do. On Cumcloch Farm, on the outskirts of Bergellert, lies one of the most challenging sections of track. Both John Owen and his wife, Shan, were vehemently opposed to reinstating the railway, fearing the disruption it would bring. Problem. That's the problem we get, you see. You see that sheep there now? Could be eight or ten of them. David Thomas attempts to build bridges with Shan Owen and her family. What I've done today is take uh, Mrs Owen, Cumcloch, and her grandchildren on the train on a short trip up the line and I think it pays dividends tenfold afterwards. We've lived here, what, 36 years? Yeah. And it's only last summer that we walked through it for the first time. It's no good as just barging in here and saying, well, we're going to build this railway, we've got to work with them and that's the, the best way to do it is to tell them when we're coming there to work what we're going to do. Come out of here. Thank you. This area, come clock, is a very unusual bit of railway with a complete spiral. I mean, I'm not quite sure what the drop is in terms of metres, but it's it's steep all the way down. And this is one bit in particular that I've been looking forward to working on for quite a few years. One, two, three. Oh, that's, that's all right. All right. Still creeping back a little bit. Uh, still got, uh, Carnarvon gas fitter Tony Murphy is also here. Each length of track is 18 metres or 60 foot. There's 24 sleepers per length. On a good day, we'd get six lengths down. So 360 foot of track down in a good day, you know. It is hard work, but it's only as hard as you want it to be. If you don't want to do hard work, then you don't have to. That's the, the beauty of being a volunteer. I came across this railway when I first moved to the area in the early 1970s. Like many of the other people involved in this project, it just seemed too good a dream to pass up on. The thought of putting it back, especially at a time when other railways have been closed left, right and centre. As long as the railway don't charge me, I think I'll probably be one of the first to go on it. For many enthusiasts, seeing the Bayer Garrets working the S-Bends on the steep gradients through Cumcloch Farm was always going to be special. But for many, the real excitement would be the completion of the track through Bayer Gellert and the restored Aberglasgow Pass. This is an historic day in the story of the Welsh Highland Railway. For the first time in over 70 years, Trains are running again through the world-famous Aberglaslin Pass. On board, some very generous supporters. Something like £10,000 or so is what I've probably put into this railway. I think it's been well worth the money, both for my own personal point of view, but also, I think, for the, for the value that it's going to bring to the area. I just remember 
many years ago when I was a student here uh, in Bangor, uh, walking along through the tunnels in the Ambergaslim Pass, and I just said to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if one day we have a train through here? For the first time, it, it's an experience. It's the, the noise, because the engine's working quite hard climbing the hill, is quite deafening. <laughs> You just come out of this first out of this dark hole into this beautiful bright sunlight and one of the best views in the world. And it's just stunning. It really is stunning. It's a great thrill for me. I love seeing steam locomotives in operation, I have to admit. In that respect, perhaps I've never grown up. But it's also a great thrill to see this wonderful new resource for Snowdonia for North Wales coming into operation. We'll be able to take people in a green, environmentally sustainable way through one of the most stunning landscapes in, I was going to say Wales, I think I mean the world. I couldn't tell you when I started being interested in steam locomotives, but I could claim to be a train spotter while still at the infant school. The Steamworks Narrowgate Railway is very much Wales' gift to the world. Railways such as this were devised in Gwynedd in the 1860s and they became a model that were followed all over the world because they were a cut-price way of opening up parts of the world that couldn't really afford a mainline railway but that desperately needed the means to export their goods or to move their people around. So you'll find railways based on this one in India, in China, in Mexico, all over the place. Well, it made me think of my school days when I used to go up for, on the train from Belgella to the farm to see my granny. Well, I enjoyed it. I had some very good photos, I think, of the river. With the railway nearing completion and with only four miles to go, 93-year-old John Pritchard had set his heart on seeing the project through to the end but it was not to be. For the Black Hand Gang, the death of their unofficial mascot remains hard to take. John Pritchard was quite a guy, really. He lived and died on, on a small farm just outside Beer Gellert. And it was a sort of inspiration to, to, to some of the gang, I suppose. You know, the, this man in his 90s, he is taking interest in us and in the railway and, and, and our achievements. It was great talk. It was somebody, actually who had um, been on this railway originally. You know, it can only be described as a tragedy. The God didn't give him enough time to see the thing through. But uh, he's watching from up there. I'm sure he is. Next time in Full Steam Ahead, the work continues in all weathers when the railway's very own Steam Santa has to cool things down among his little helpers. Come and get me if you think you can! I don't... Oh, I think that is happening as well. <laughs> Completion draws nearer as a national celebrity is invited to declare the railway open. But there's sadness too for members of the Black Hand Gang as they contemplate what lies ahead. Yeah, it's going to be strange. I'm a little bit here for now. <laughs> <clears throat>